Hello once again. A short video today to show a couple of really unique vintage light bulbs that I've had in my possession for two years. These are two Sylvania Capsulite bulbs. They are an early halogen light bulb meant to replace an ordinary incandescent light bulb made in the 1980s. And the fact that these are in early use of a now conventional technology is only half of the coolness of these bulbs. The other half is what they look like. I have one out of the box here. And this is what they look like. Look at this. This is called a DC shape bulb. Really unique shaped envelope. Also, the glass is super thick in these because like today's modern bulbs, there is... Uh, a halogen capsule inside here and then the outer bulb is a second envelope and it's super super thick and this bulb is so heavy really really cool here's the etch this is the 72 watt variety meant to replace a 100 watt incandescent bulb 3500 hour life so you also got much longer life than an incandescent bulb Westinghouse competed with a version of this. They called it the Turtle Light. So yes, very cool, very novel bulb at the time and undoubtedly very expensive. When the energy crisis hit in the 1970s, it kind of kick-started a bunch of different ways to conserve energy. It sped up and completed the migration from tubes to solid-state electronics. Many of what we would now today call startup companies experimented with uh, electric cars and almost all of them failed. And uh, lighting manufacturers began experimenting with ways of replacing the standard incandescent light bulb with a more energy efficient alternative. Like for example, circline fluorescent lamp adapters of which I had two and I let my ex take them in the breakup and now I'm regretting it. And then there were the YouTube compact fluorescent lamp adapters. Um, and GE even experimented with a metal halide replacement for a standard incandescent bulb called the Halark. And uh, coolest technology I've ever seen, but it was a complete failure. And these early halogen incandescent bulb replacements started coming out. And again... These were not popular. The technology was sound. These are legitimately good bulbs, as we will see when I try one of these out in a few minutes. The technology was sound, but they were expensive to manufacture, uh, and thus they cost a lot for consumers. And even with the benefits like the longer life, the energy savings, and actually the quality of light is a bit better, you know, it's a bit whiter light, a bit cooler color temperature. Um, consumers just didn't take up on these. The initial cost was too expensive and it was weird and people tend to not gravitate towards weird things generally. So yeah, I found these two uh, in a thrift store uh, about three years ago and they both work. And uh, let's take a look at the box here. So this is when Sylvania was part of GTE, so these are from the 1980s. Halogen incandescent capsulite. Capsulite referring to the halogen capsule that's inside the bulb. 72 watts, average light 3500 hours, average lumens 1300, so it's on par with a 100 watt incandescent bulb. Caution, do not use in wet locations. That was sort of another detractor from these, they weren't as versatile. Unlike other incandescent lamps, capsule lights may continue to light after the bulb has been damaged as a result of exposure to moisture droplets or physical abuse. If this occurs, the capsule light must be replaced promptly since the inner glass capsule operates at high temperature and pressure and can unexpectedly shatter, creating a risk, risk of property damage or personal injury. Made in USA. So yeah, these are kind of like a mercury vapor lamp or any high pressure discharge lamp where uh, the outer bulb remaining intact is really important to the integrity of the bulb uh, and for safety purposes um, for mercury vapor and metal halide lamps if the outer bulb gets broken 
they just belch out shortwave UV, which can really hurt you if you're exposed to it for any significant amount of time. Um, the halogen capsule in this may also emit a small amount of shortwave UV. Uh, incandescent bulbs, if you run them hot enough, they will generate UV. Um, and yeah, we've got the made in USA. Got a part number there. And then we've seen the bulb itself. Let me get a scale here. And let's just, I've got an ordinary light bulb here. So let's bring this to pounds and ounces because the majority of my viewers are American. Put this on here, if it'll stay. There, one ounce. And let's put on one of these. Five ounces. This thing weighs as much as five ordinary incandescent bulbs. How amazing is that? Now, the technology that these use is so weird and cool. Um, because unlike modern halogen bulbs today, which is just a halogen bulb inside of the normal uh, light bulb envelope and connected straight to the 120 volts, these don't work that way. The halogen capsule inside this bulb actually runs on DC current. There's a diode inside here that just does half-wave rectification of the AC current, and that's what the halogen bulb runs on. There's an amazing webpage about the Sylvania Capsulite at lamptech.co.uk, a great website that I've referenced for many years. And it explains what this diode is for. Basically, they used it to effectively cut the incoming uh, voltage from 120 volts to about 85 volts. And the reason they did this is because a lower voltage incandescent lamp, and when I say incandescent, I'm meaning any black body radiating lamp, so that could be standard incandescent or halogen. Uh, a lower voltage incandescent lamp is more efficient per watt than a higher voltage one. So by sticking in this diode and cutting the effective RMS voltage from 120 to 85 and using an 85 volt halogen capsule, they can get a little more efficiency out of that halogen capsule than they would have with the available 120 volt capsules of the time. And that was sort of the secret uh, to the capsulite's higher efficiency given the technology of the time. But what a weird design. And if you look at this photograph here, you can see the diode down in the bottom in the uh, screw base there. And there you can see what the halogen capsule looks like. Beautiful x-ray photograph. And you can see the filament of the halogen capsule. Really amazing. Uh, and yeah, really cool, really cool web page here. As a result of that, uh, one of the downsides of this thing, uh, depending on how sensitive you are to flicker, these bulbs actually flicker at 60 hertz. Uh, which, you know, any incandescent light bulb, you know, on normal 50 or 60 hertz current, they turn off and on at a rate of 100 or 120 hertz. And between that and the fact that it's a filament that's hot and it takes you know, a split second to cool down, you don't see any flicker. During the zero crossings of the AC current, the filament is still hot. But these, that on-off cycle is halved because of that diode. So you can kind of notice, only a little bit, it's like a fluorescent lamp, you can kind of notice the 60 hertz flicker. It's really strange. Um, also, as a result of this, you cannot use these on dimmers, not uh, not standard triac dimmers anyhow, because um, that diode messes with them. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, you know that sometimes I'm a bit of a shit disturber. I like to try things and 
Sometimes I get burned for it. I did try this on a dimmer. It actually worked just fine. Um, but I would never use one of these on a dimmer long term for the safety of the bulb and the dimmer. But yeah, you technically can't dim these because uh, of that diode in there. It was such a, such a weird bulb. Well, how about I quit talking about it and we turn it on. I will grab a socket, screw this guy in, and uh, we'll turn it on, see how it looks. It's, uh, it's an inside frost bulb, so uh, it produces a very nice light indeed. We're socketed in. I'll turn it on here. And it's a very nice light, actually. I don't notice any flickering right now. The camera might, though. I don't know if... No, maybe not. The camera is uh, uh, telling me to put on the second neutral density filter, so I'll do that. And there we are. And now the camera's telling me to turn the neutral density filter off. Ah, very intelligent. Anywho, yeah, very nice. The, the shape of the bulb, compared with the inside frost, makes this really neat to look at, if only for a few seconds, because, you know, you're staring at a light bulb. Um, but yeah, really, really neat. And very good quality of light. It is slightly cooler than a standard incandescent bulb. It's very nice. So how about I do this? Uh, immediately above me is my ceiling fan, and it takes a standard light bulb. Let me unscrew the bulb that's in it, that's lighting up this coffee table. Screw this guy in it, and see how it looks. All right, my auxiliary lights are out, so let me turn on the overhead light. Well, the color is certainly warmer than uh, this 3500K CFL that normally lives in there. Um, the brightness is about the same, though. Yeah, I would say about the same. So yeah, certainly a uh, good quality light. I'm not a fan of warm white generally but uh, as far as warm light bulbs go this is a very nice one so I will turn it off here there you go I was inspired to make this video today because a youtuber I watch uh, Parrot175 who is a vintage lighting enthusiast recently uploaded a video of another very unique light bulb that Sylvania sold in the 2000s called the Landmark bulb. And it was an, it's, it's an or ordinary incandescent bulb, but it's in an S19 shaped envelope. And it's inside frosted. And it had a 10,000 hour life. So it was a 60 watt bulb, but with the brightness of a 40 watt bulb. Very inefficient, but very long life. And it's such a cool looking bulb. Meant to be used in architectural settings. Um... And those bulbs were just so cool, it uh, made me think about these ones and figured I should uh, get them out and finally make the video. Well, there you go. That's a look at these vintage 1980s Sylvania Capsulite early halogen bulbs. What a very unique and very cool light bulb. Uh, an early experiment at a technology that is now normal now. You walk in anywhere and you can buy a... Uh, uh, a halogen light bulb that looks just like this um, but back in the 1980s it was new and they had to do some really strange uh, design choices like a super thick heavy glass envelope and and a halogen capsule that runs on DC current to make it work and while it wasn't commercially successful Damn, they were cool. And it's a genuinely good light bulb. I would like to use these. I hate that I have two of them. And uh, they're just sitting in their boxes. Because I want to use them somewhere where they are seen. I don't want them to be hidden behind a globe. So I'm hoping someday I'm living in a place that perhaps has one of those really basic sockets sticking out of the ceiling. Or some other style of light fixture where the bulb and its really cool shape can be seen but until then I am keeping them safe and uh, now I've gotten to show them to you here today so I hope you enjoyed thank you for taking a look at uh, these cool light bulbs with me 
A big thanks to my Patreon supporters, including the one who uh, made me think of these bulbs today and decide to make this video. And to everyone else, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.